Uh, hello there and uh, welcome back to my new video. In this video I'm going to give you a complete introduction on uh, Kotlin core routines. I will uh, explain all the necessary things you need to know about uh, Kotlin core routines to understand uh, what they are and uh, how they actually work behind the scenes. But uh, before we start with the core routines uh, we need to learn more about uh, synchronous and uh, asynchronous execution in programming. So uh, what is the difference between those two? Uh, well uh, synchronous means that the code is uh, executing in a sequential order so uh, if one task is uh, executing then the other one below it uh, will not start until the first one is uh, finished and uh, on the other hand asynchronous means that uh, you can move on to another task even before the first one is finished so uh, in other words uh, two synchronous tasks must be aware of uh, one another so that the other can start when the first one is finished and uh, asynchronous means that they are totally independent of uh, one another. So uh, let me give you one simple example and uh, imagine that we have a function named network request that uh, does all the heavy work and uh, when we synchronously run this function in our application it will block our main thread and our UI might freeze and uh, get unresponsive. And uh, that's all because our application will block our main thread until network request function is done. So our screen will not be able to refresh itself until that function is finished. And uh, blocking our main thread is a bad idea. Instead, all our non-UI related stuff needs to be moved on a different thread. And uh, that's where Kotlin coroutines comes in. So uh, coroutines will uh, simplify asynchronous programming by writing synchronous code. So now let's use the same example as before, but this time uh, we will run our function asynchronously without blocking our UI thread. And uh, we only need to make uh, two small uh, modifications for that. The first one is uh, adding a suspend keyword in uh, front of the function. And the second one is uh, optionally adding a with context function inside our network request function. So uh, this suspend keyword is uh, basically telling our Kotlin compiler that the function will run uh, within a coroutine and the uh, suspend functions uh, should only be called from a coroutine or another suspend function. And uh, with context function is uh, needed to specify on which thread the code inside it uh, should run on. So there are three available uh, dispatchers, main, IO and default. So the main uh, dispatcher is uh, optimized for a UI code or a non-blocking code that uh, executes fast. Uh, next we have a IO dispatcher and uh, it's optimized for network and uh, disk operations. And uh, finally we have a default uh, dispatcher uh, which is uh, optimized for uh, CPU intensive tasks and uh, some bigger computations. So uh, now you saw uh, how to execute uh, the same code in a different ways, synchronously and asynchronously, or in a blocking and non-blocking way. So the main advantage of a non-blocking way is that uh, instead of uh, blocking the whole thread, we suspend the coroutine with uh, all its suspending functions and we let other tasks uh, running freely while we go to another thread. And uh, when a suspending function is ready to be continued, it gets returned to a thread. So uh, coroutines are often called uh, lightweight threads and that means that we can run code on coroutines uh, similar to how we run code on uh, threads. So uh, coroutines are uh, computations that uh, run on top of the threads and can be suspended. So by saying suspended, uh, we mean that the corresponding computation can be paused, removed from the thread, and stored in a memory. And uh, meanwhile, the thread is free to be occupied by other activities. Uh, okay, so I think that uh, this is enough of theory. And uh, now I'm going to show you how to launch a simple core routine so you can see a real example how all of this is actually working. Okay, so uh, I have opened this uh, Kotlin playground inside my uh, web browser and you can access this uh, website or this playground at this uh, same URL. So play.kotlinlang.org and here you can experiment with the code. So I have only one uh, import here, kotlinx.coroutines and uh, here I'm going to show you how to launch a simple coroutine. Uh, so first uh, I'm going to create uh, two different functions. So the first function should be named uh, task1. Okay, and this function will just uh, print, uh, for example, uh, hello. And I'm going to create another function and this time this second function will be named uh, task2 and it will say uh, world. Okay. So now from our main uh, function here, I'm going to just call those uh, two functions. So task1 and uh, down below uh, task2, okay? So uh, now uh, we need to press this uh, run button here. 
and now the compiler uh, will run and we're going to see the result here so first as you can see here uh, we have written hello then world because the first function which was executed was this uh, task 1 which says hello and then this task 2 which says world so uh, now I'm going to make this uh, task2 function a suspending function. So I need to add a suspend keyword uh, in front of this uh, fun keyword. So now this function is actually a suspend function. And uh, when we try to run this code, uh, we should get an error. Uh, because this suspend function cannot uh, run inside this uh, main uh, function. So as I already mentioned, suspend function can only run inside other suspending functions or inside the coroutine. So first let me cut this part of the code. And now we need to create a coroutine here. So uh, to create a coroutine, uh, we first need to create a coroutine scope. And uh, there is already a predefined scope uh, named the global scope. So let's type global scope. Okay, so this one. Then let's call a coroutine builder named the launch. So this uh, launch will basically uh, launch the coroutine. And there are different uh, coroutine uh, builders like launch and uh, async. And I'm going to talk about uh, different coroutine builders in some of the next videos. And you can write down in the comments if you want to see more interesting uh, videos about uh, Kotlin coroutines. So inside this uh, launch, uh, we want to call our task2 function. And now uh, we should be able to run this uh, properly without any errors. Because uh, we have uh, called this suspending function inside the coroutine. And this is our coroutine. So now, as you can see, we have received a different result uh, because I have called this uh, task2 first but uh, for example let's uh, add here one delay uh, function so this delay function is only available inside this uh, coroutine or a suspend function so I'm going to add a delay of uh, one second and now let's uh, try and run this code so now uh, you will see that we have received only hello uh, text here and not this world and the reason why is because uh, we need to uh, keep our uh, JVM uh, machine alive so for that I'm going to uh, write here thread dot sleep and I'm going to write here uh, 200 or 2000 uh, milliseconds or two seconds so now if I run this example uh, we're going to see both of those texts so a uh, hello and world so as you can see the first uh, task which was run uh, was this task one which says hello and the reason why is because we have added the delay here of uh, one second. And uh, after this uh, task one was successfully completed, then we have called this uh, task two because this task two was suspended. And after this uh, task one uh, function was completed, then uh, this uh, task two function was uh, resumed. So basically uh, every suspending function uh, needs to be uh, run inside a coroutine and uh, every coroutine needs to have a coroutine scope and in this case we have used this uh, default global scope which basically stays alive as long as our application stays alive but of course we can create our own custom uh, coroutine uh, scopes and there are already some predefined scopes like uh, lifecycle scope and uh, view model scope but uh, I'm going to talk about uh, coroutine scopes in some of the next videos so uh, write down in the comments if you want to see more videos about uh, Kotlin coroutines okay uh, so now I'm going to prove to you that uh, this task uh, 2 function uh, was running on a different thread so here I'm going to add the one more print line and here I'm going to say so I'm going to write here a uh, thread dot uh, current thread dot uh, name okay and I'm going to copy and paste this line of code inside this uh, task 2 suspending function so now uh, we should be able to see on which thread those two functions uh, were running so let's run this uh, example and now uh, you will see that this uh, hello uh, was running on a main thread and this uh, world was uh, running on a default dispatcher worker one and of course we can change our uh, dispatcher with uh, with context uh, function which I mentioned earlier so now let me just uh, cut all of that from our uh, task 2 and here I'm going to call uh, with context uh, function and here I'm going to pass uh, dispatchers.io so here I'm using dispatcher.io and here inside I'm going to basically uh, paste those three lines of code so now let's run this example again and let's see uh, which thread uh, should we get now okay uh, so now we can see a result and now we are using this uh, default dispatcher uh, worker 2 so uh, basically uh, that's it for this video and uh, now in this video you learn how to basically create your own suspending functions and how to call them inside the coroutine scope so every suspending function uh, needs to be called uh, from another suspending function or uh, from a coroutine and uh, every coroutine needs a coroutine scope and in this case we have used this uh, global scope and we have 
have used this um, coroutine builder name the launch to actually uh, call our task two suspending function, which was uh, actually called after our task one uh, regular function. And also we have logged the actual thread on which uh, those two functions were running. So the first one was running on a main thread and the second one uh, was running on our uh, worker thread. So be sure to write down in the comments if you want to see more videos about uh, Kotlin coroutines and some other different uh, interesting functionalities of uh, coroutines library. So uh, that will be all for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. Please like this video if you find it helpful, of course, and uh, see you in the next one.